Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and I'm so glad to have you here today because today is another favorites video. I cannot believe we are into another month. Do I start every video saying that? Yes, probably. <laughs> But it's just crazy how fast time is flying right now. It's already May. I am so shook right now. So little monthly update. We have done so much work on the greenhouse. I'm currently on vacation in Ireland as you're watching this. So we had to pause production there. And when I get back, I'm gonna be doing so much planting. I'm gonna be planting pretty much my entire garden. All of the seedlings that I started are doing really awesome. And I've got so much stuff to do with my house plants. They're going to be going outside pretty soon. I think by the time that I'm back from my trips this month, I'm going to be putting them outside maybe at the end of May, which is so exciting. And we'll be able to use all the information that we learned in the bringing houseplants outside video that I posted a few weeks ago. So anyway, before I get too far into it, I also want to say that this video is sponsored by Audible. So thank you so much to Audible. And I cannot wait to tell you about them a little bit later. But this month for my favorites, it's mostly focused on plants because I haven't really been using a ton of products this month. So I'm just excited to show you some beautiful plants that are doing some awesome work or just in general like are sticking out to me as being a front runner right now. So I'm gonna get started with my Pilea peperomioides. It is so beautiful. And I think that the reason that it looks so nice is because the growth is like round. Like, okay, the leaves are round. But that's not what I'm talking about, but just like the overall shape of the plant is very round. Like we have some of these leaves that are sticking straight up. And I think that that is because it has the um sk the skylight at the top of the ceiling so the plant is able to get sunlight from above and the side which is so cool and it is actually kind of high up on a shelf so i think that it is reaching a bit for that light from the sky and i just think that that is so awesome i this is a plant that i feel like the plant community has forgotten about maybe that would be a fun video <laughs> Plants the plant community forgot about like they were really popular and now they're not I think that might be interesting Let me know if you're interested, but this would definitely be on that list and honestly I think mine might inspire a, a reawakening of this plant in the plant community <laughs> I mean, that's kind of saying a lot. I don't think that's actually gonna happen, but it's really beautiful. I feel like it looks so cool. And honestly, it's a plant that I kind of forget about a lot of the time. These are really, really awesome. I find them to be pretty drought tolerant too. So it goes a while between waterings, like probably at least two weeks. And it's in terracotta. It's in this really beautiful pot. I got this plant from, I'm forgetting the name, but I'm gonna put it on the screen if you're interested. The pottery from there is really beautiful and the plants come potted in here already. Like they're just like ready to go. I find that places like that are really nice if you're wanting to gift somebody a plant because I feel like gifting somebody a plant is really nice, but it also creates a lot of work for them. Like it's kind of like bringing flowers to somebody's house who's hosting dinner, right? If, is it the same vibe? I'm not sure, but it is a lot of work. So if you can get them a plant that's already potted up um, and you could just buy it, pot it up and have it sent to them, that would be really awesome. So anyway, plant number one, Pilea peperomioides. Okay, plant number two, we've got the fern leaf cactus. So I saw a really big fern leaf cactus at my local nursery, Vintage Hill, yesterday I was there. Um, Shota was in town, which you might've seen that video. No, no, you're gonna see that video with Shota. Anyway, he was in town and we went out to Vintage Hill so that he could meet Jeff, the owner, because they carry our soil, De La Tanks. And I saw a really big version of this and I was so tempted to buy it. But then I was like, you know what, Becca? No, you already have one. You don't need another one. <laughs> and she's actually putting out quite a bit of new growth. Like this is new, this is new. These two are new. I got this plant from Tennessee Tropicals. I wanna say it was probably the last time I did an unboxing, which I would say was at least nine months ago. We're gonna go with nine months. Anyway, it wasn't doing much for a while. Like it took a while to get acclimated to my home. And I don't think that I had it in the greatest of spots, but now I have it up high on my wall. So it's getting the light also from the skylights, which are just incredible. And yeah, it's really happy. I'm, I love seeing the new growth. It's a beautiful, nice green color and it's shaped really beautiful. I find it to be just in general, kind of a funky plant. And I really like that about it. <laughs> I like plants that are unique and just like, I don't know, make your space kind of different. All right, everyone, let's take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, which is Audible. So Audible has a selection of audiobooks, a wide selection of audiobooks from a bunch of different genres, romance to self-help, wellness, business, fiction, 
all of these types of things. They also have a lot of celebrity memoirs and they also have podcasts if you're a podcast listener. As an Audible member, you get one credit a month to use on a book to keep and then you also have access to other Audible originals that are in their library for you to listen to and stream whenever you want to. I've been using my credits to read the Throne of Glass series. I'm currently about to start book three and I'm really excited about it. Book two was okay. I think that it's gonna start picking up. I think in book four is what a lot of people have told me. So I'm really excited that the entire series is on Audible so that I can just just read right through no problem and this might be kind of funny but sometimes when I can't sleep at night I will turn on a book that I've already read on audible and turn on the sleep timer so there's a little sleep timer that will turn off like it'll stop playing after the time that you set so sometimes I'll do like a 30 minute sleep timer and I just sort of listen to a book that I've already read to help me fall asleep and it works really well actually <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested in checking out Audible, you can get a 30-day free trial by visiting audible.com slash DeLaPlants or texting DeLaPlants to 500-500. All right, guys, let's get back into the video. I suppose that I should also put the Pilea here. Yeah, we'll also put that there. Ooh, that looks cute. <laughs> okay, so for a non-planty item, I want to talk about chopsticks because chopsticks have been something that I actually have been using like as far as tools go that I haven't talked about before. I've been using a lot of the same stuff like the plant a potty the plant folio, all of these plant products I've been using, but I just talk about them all the time. So I wanted to, I always want to bring something new to these but I haven't been trying out any new products lately. So anyway, <laughs> as I've been doing a lot of repotting, I find chopsticks to be so, so helpful for multiple reasons. So number one, you can use a chopstick to sort of like cut out the edge of a plant because when you're repotting out of, let's say a terracotta pot, you can't squeeze the pot to help the plant come out. So you kind of have to hope that you can like carve it out or push it up from the bottom. So what I've been doing is carving it out and then pushing it up from the bottom drainage hole. And that works so well to get the plant out of the pot without, with minimal damage to the roots because you really wanna be careful of those root systems. I also have a chopstick sitting in a plant as sort of like a, a miniature wood plank <laughs> just for support of a tiny plant. And like, it's working out really well. I have a little piece of plant Velcro, like, you know, wrapped around it. And it's working out really nicely to keep the plant upright and also just start training it to stand up a little bit straighter. Okay, so we have this beauty. This is my variegated Epipremnum pinnatum. And I am actually so surprised at how much this plant has grown on me, specifically like this one right here. Because when I got it, I got this from Flower Farm in, it's like outside of Kansas City. And it wasn't looking like super, super variegated. Like it had this leaf here and this leaf here and these two. And as you can see, it's not like mega variegated. And then it put out this leaf, which again, not a ton of variegation, but then we got this cutie. And it's pretty obvious that it's gonna have lots of variegation. And as you can see, the leaves are just getting really long and skinny and they have these cute little fenestrations in them. I just think that this is so cool. And it's already outgrown the plank of wood that I put it on. So it's going to be needing a new plank of wood and one that will be its like permanent home. So what I'm doing with these plants on planks is I'm planning on just letting the plant grow to the top of the plank and then chopping and propping and then repotting back into the pot until I have like a really, really full plant. And if I wanted, I could also just like cut off the top and start it on a new plank of wood that is much longer. It just, you know, just depends on how big I want the plants to get. But I didn't think that this one would grow as fast as, as it is, but it really is kicking. So I'm really excited. I think by the time I'm back from my trip, I might have a new leaf coming out, which is super exciting. So anyway, Every, variegated Epipremnum pinnatum is a really awesome, easy plant. And if you're looking for something that is a little bit more unique, a little bit maybe more like collector grade, but is also very easy, I would highly suggest this one and give it something to support it so that it can grow up right. Um, and I think it'll be super happy for you. I mean, mine is definitely very happy. It might be needing a new pot eventually soon too, which is exciting. Okay, the last plant, whoa. <laughs> The last plant that I want to show you today is my Monstera Thai Constellation. Look at this new leaf. It's bigger than my head finally. I think maybe it's the same size as my head. No, it's a little bit bigger, a few inches. Oh my gosh, I am so excited about this. 
This plant is a plant that I genuinely lucked out on. It was, I got it a couple of years ago. I think I paid $95 for it. And basically what happened was the person who was going to buy the plant was next in line to buy and they weren't ready yet. So they asked me if I wanted their spot in line and I was like, yes. <laughs> So anyway, I got the plant, that was a few years ago and I've been growing it. It was growing on a moss pole for a while and it actually was one of my only plants that ever interacted with the moss pole. And I think that's the reason that the leaves, you know, got kind of big, kind of fast. So as you can see, there's another leaf right here that's a pretty good size. It's really tall though, like the newest leaf is actually shorter than this leaf, um, which I found kind of interesting, but I'm okay with it because I kind of like the way that it looks with the growth being like really bushy and short. And I think that this leaf doesn't have like as much height to it because it's getting a lot more sunlight, so it's not having to reach for anything. So I'd say that's a good sign, and I'm really excited to see this one like starting to interact with this plank. As you can see, it's on a plank of wood, um, and I see a, a new aerial root, which I hope will attach as it grows a little bit longer to this plank of wood as the humidity grows in this room. It's currently 50% humidity in here. And um, yeah, that's just the beginning of the season too. So I'm hoping that as the season continues on, it will get more and more humid in here. And I'm just, yeah, I'm so excited to see the plants starting to interact with the wood. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and hanging out with me. I hope that you have a beautiful May. I hope that you had a wonderful April and you're excited to get started gardening this season. And just in general, if you're not gardening, I hope that you're excited to see your plants starting to grow and make some changes. And hopefully you'll have lots of beautiful new leaves in your collection. I will see you next time. Oh, and don't forget to check out Audible. I'll have that link down below. All right, see you next time, bye.